Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy and welcome to the third installment in our series of videos about how to teach synthesis and sound design using the Bullfrog Excel by Erica Synths this behemoth we have over here. On the previous videos, we had a quick run through of all the features that are available, and we looked at the voltage controlled oscillator. Now we're gonna go deep into the voltage controlled filter, which we have right here. This is a low pass filter, which is equivalent to a high cut filter. And the opposite is also true. If you have a high pass filter, that's also known as a low cut filter. Erica Synth actually, does provide a high pass filter card for the Bullfrog and the Bullfrog XL. Plugs right up here. But today we're gonna focus on the one that's built into the panel. And we already looked at it a little bit as an oscillator last week. We noticed that when we have the resonance all the way high, a filter becomes a sine wave oscillator. That's almost always true. Most filters do that, not all of them. But today we're gonna use it as its main function, its original use, which is to shape the timbre of your sound by cutting off some frequencies. Right? It's like a radical EQ. What it does is it cuts off all the frequencies above a certain threshold. And you set that threshold with this cutoff frequency knob over here. It only says cutoff, but it really should say cutoff frequency, right? Because that's what it is. It's the frequency at which point the frequency cut will start, right? So to illustrate it, why don't we use white noise, right? We haven't checked out the white noise on this synth yet. So I'm gonna take the noise output from the mixer over here and I'm gonna plug it right into the audio input of the filter of the VCF. And right now I have my cutoff frequency all the way up and my resonance all the way down. And that basically is like passing the whole sound through with no modification at all. So as I plug the filter output VCF out right here, I'm gonna plug that into our splitter here, which is sending the signal both to the oscilloscope and to the audio interface that's recording the audio. And here we have, oh, super loud. Here we have white noise. And as you can hear and see, white noise is just a very fast succession of random voltages, right? And that creates this just hiss or this static kind of a sound. And that's basically what white noise is. It's generated by a cascading transistor in kind of a failure mode. It's really interesting. Filtering uh, noise is one of the really useful, cool, classic things to do with a synthesizer. For sound design, you can use it for a lot of really useful things. So let's check it out, what happens when I start cutting off frequencies from that white noise. Very cool, right? So you can use this kind of a thing to do sweeps for transitions, for example, like a the uh, all-powerful whoosh, right? That can be very useful for just like a transition between scenes on a on audiovisual material, or you can you can use it to create kind of like a wind or an ocean sound. See, this is kind of like the ambience of the sea. And if I tweak it a little bit, it can sound like waves approaching and washing ashore. Right? Now, the resonance, what it is, it's basically feedback. It's sending the output back to the input, which will basically emphasize the cutoff frequency, right? So when you see a filter, if you see emphasis or feedback or resonance, they're the same thing. There's just different nomenclature, right? So we're gonna turn up this resonance now. Listen to that. Now we have kind of a polar wind sound. Right? And we can turn that resonance even higher and it's gonna start oscillating. We're gonna start getting like a discernible pitch. Hear that? It's 
So that's really cool and it's one of the simplest and most classic and useful uses of a synthesizer is to just use a white noise generator and a filter and you can do a whole bunch of very useful and cool sounds, right? Now, let's move this from the noise to our oscillator output, right? Now, our oscillator has two waveforms, basic waveforms, the sine and the pulse. Remember, the sine wave is really just a fundamental, right? And even though this oscillator sine wave isn't absolutely perfect, it's still very clean and very pure. It doesn't have a whole lot of higher harmonics, so it's not going to really get the most out of our filter, right? Basically, our filter is just going to turn the volume down. But when you have a waveform that's rich in upper harmonics, such as the pulse wave, then you can really hear that filter do its thing, right? So we're going to use the pulse wave into the filter here. I'm going to start turning it up. Cut off all the way up and the resonance all the way down. We basically get our pulse wave, right? And I can shape it differently if I want, right? Let's put it here where it's not exactly a square wave, it's a little bit harsher sounding than that. Now let's cut off frequencies with the filter. Right? Isn't that one of the most classic synthesizer sounds that you've heard all your life? With more resonance, we get more emphasis on that cutoff frequency. And in fact, higher resonance yet will actually excite harmonics in the fundamental that we're feeding it. So we really hear those harmonics as the frequency sweep passes through them. And that's why it's called resonance too, because it resonates whenever it passes through one of the harmonics present in the original waveform. Now this alone, you know, just kind of playing around with sweeping manually is super fun. But this is a voltage controlled filter, which means it can be controlled with external voltage sources. One cool voltage source that I have available here on this keyboard is the actual uh, modulation strip here. I have that routed to this cable right here. So I can put this cable in my CV input number one and I can use my modulation wheel here on my keyboard to control it externally. So when I'm playing, I don't have to be turning the knob with my hand on the synth here. I can simply use a control from the keyboard itself. It's got less resonance here. Right? We've already been using the envelope generator, even though we haven't done the video about the envelope generators yet, where we'll go more in depth. Basically, it's acting as an LFO or a low frequency oscillator. It's generating a voltage that goes up and down periodically, but slowly. So it's not audible as a pitch, but it, you can hear it as it affects other parameters in the synthesizer. So I can use that to automatically modulate our filter frequency. Right, and this filter has two inputs for voltage control. This one, CV1 level, has a level control. So I can make it very radical or I can make it very subtle. So now our, our pitch of the oscillator is static, right? Staying there. And the filter is opening and closing. I can move that center frequency by turning the cutoff knob here. And I can make the modulation more radical by turning up the CV1 level. 
right? CV2 has no level control. Um, so if, you, if I plug it in, you get the full range of voltage variation that's coming from the envelope generator number two over there. But if you want to be able to control that, you use number one here. All right, let's turn up the resonance a little bit. Hear that? It becomes, it starts whistling by itself as a second oscillator as I get really high. About at the middle, you get pretty good emphasis without self oscillating. Right? Let's turn on a sequence just to make this more interesting. Make the envelope faster. Very cool. Now, instead of using the pulse output, I can use the mix output here too. And then I can add some noise to that sound, see? Maybe not so much. And I can even add the sine wave and shape the sine wave differently so it has a little more harmonic content, right? So this is the this is the sine wave with the offset shape. Here I'm adding the pulse. And the shape of this, the pulse is also being altered by the shape knob. It changes both of them simultaneously. So it's actually not a square, right? It's a pulse wave. In the middle it's a square. And we can add a little noise for color. There you go. Cool, right? So that's basically what a filter does. Now some uh, activities that you can suggest to your students, you can suggest the very things, the very activities that we've demonstrated in this video. So for example, manually creating wave and uh, wind kind of sounds, right? With the white noise sent to it, or even some kind of a drone by just setting a really low note. So let's stop the sequencer, cut off the noise, just turn the pulse all the way up and uh, we'll turn off in fact, this is, a, you know, if you don't want to unplug the cable, you can just turn CV one level all the way down and no longer is that voltage affecting anything. And you can just do it manually, right? And we can choose a low note and just create like a drone, play it manually with the cutoff. And then play around with sending different modulation sources such as the envelope generator or the pitch wheel if it's available if you guys have a keyboard on the last video about the oscillators i showed you how to use the filter as an oscillator to modulate the frequency of the main oscillator right so why don't we have a little fun with that inverted this time so now i'm going to remove any kind of audio input from the filter i'm going to turn the resonance all the way up so it's oscillating by itself right and you can see how perfect that sine wave is way more perfect than the oscillator one cleaner truly just the fundamental no harmonics at all right and now we can take the sine output we'll put the shape back in the middle take the sine output from our oscillator and plug that into any of the cv inputs We'll use the one that has an attenuator so we can play around with the amplitude as well. And again, I'm playing with the tune knob as well as the cutoff knob. And we're getting these crazy beautiful sci-fi sounds out of it. Similar to what we were getting last video when we were doing the inverse of this, right? When we were using the filter to modulate the oscillator. Now we're using the oscillator to modulate the filter. And it's a cleaner sound because the filter has a cleaner sine wave. I love the shapes that the oscilloscope makes as well. There's some really cool geometric shapes. All right.
And I think that'll do it for today's video about the filter. Next time we're gonna have a look at the VCA and delay module and continue from there. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next videos. See you soon and stay noisy.